Making a good sequel is no easy task, but if there's one creative duo that can succeed at it, it's gonna be Brubaker and Phillips. Woof woof! Hey guys, it's me Marcus aka The Mad Dog and we're back with another video. Written by Ed Brubaker and illustrated by Sean Phillips, Reckless Friend of the Devil is an original graphic novel that was published by Image Comics in April of 2021. And Ethan Reckless is having a pretty steady 1985. But when you're a private investigator, steady doesn't pay the bills. Yet when a missing woman shows up in a low budget horror movie, it unravels a conspiracy that stretches to the darkest pits of Hollywood. But can Ethan discover just how deep the rabbit hole goes? Or has he finally discovered a case that he can't solve? The art. Now when it comes to Sean Phillips there's a lot that I could say because he is really one of my favourites but at the same time I don't want to sit here and repeat everything that I said when I reviewed the first volume last year. Instead I'd pretty much just recommend checking out that video but Sean Phillips is a master of his craft and it really feels like he's just in his element with this series. Perhaps it's because there's not as much of a time constraint as there would be if he was working on a regular series but I felt like the line work was sharper here without ever losing anything that I'm used to when Phillips is on the art. And something that I noticed in this volume that I wasn't really too aware of in the first one is that the panels just felt a lot wider and more open and when I was reading through this volume I was disappointed that this wasn't available in a bigger format especially because this is my Brubaker and Phillips cube and for the longest amount of time I was just missing sleeper but then that reprint came out so it's pretty much just reckless that I'm missing in the deluxe format but because of that I feel like I explored more of the 80s LA scene along with more locations like the suburbs and offices it felt a lot wider in scope and it was fun seeing what Phillips does with that opportunity and another area where I feel like there was a drastic improvement over the first one was the colouring. Perhaps it was a stylistic choice to reflect that Ethan had more recollection over this memory, but it just looked a lot cleaner while still keeping that palette that I loved from the original book. Sure one disappointing factor was that there wasn't as many scenes at night, which in the first volume is where I felt like all facets of the art got chance to shine, but I just felt like overall the colouring was better on this one. And a side effect of that was that you got to see more of the faces and the way that Phillips uses expression. I remember in book one, mostly to fit the tone, characters would be absolutely drenched in shadow, which did have its advantages but it meant that you missed out on a lot of the detail that Phillips could include and because this second volume felt like a more personal story that really wanted to develop Ethan I think that was a great choice. He's no longer a mysterious character we don't just have to think of him as a stoic figure however though just so I'm not giving this glowing unanimous praise there was a handful of occasions where I noticed that the figures in a panel just looked off. Almost like they were all based off one of those wooden models that you'd always have to use in high school art, but then you'd never see anybody using them in the real world. But it just made me realise that I favour Phillips when he's doing close-ups or landscapes, and not really when he's doing wide shots. Unless, of course, it's action, which there isn't as much of in this volume as there was in the first one. I do wish we could have had something to the equivalent of that car chase, because I really feel like that was a great showcase for his ability. And who knows, maybe it's something that they plan on bringing back in a later volume. But there's not really much more I can say about Phillips without treading water from what I've said in the first Reckless video or also my Kill or Be Killed review, Sean Phillips just hasn't disappointed me so far and that's not just me saying that with my British bias. His style was one of the reasons why I was excited to jump back into this series and why I always look forward to an upcoming volume. And because these don't cost that much, it's very easy to catch up on them and if you wanted to pick them up, you could get them from the channel sponsor, Organic Price Books. They've got great packaging, fast shipping and amazing customer services and if you use code WOOF WOOF, you'll get $2 off your order. And if you're ordering three or more books and you want them to be delivered together, make sure you use code WOOF WOOF ship it together for 5% off your entire order. Don't worry, you can just copy and paste them from the description down below and you can use these codes as many times as you like. Jumping into the story section now, and when I was writing up this review, I was trying hard to avoid comparing this volume to the first one, since each reckless entry can in theory stand on its own. But then I realised that there was just no point in having this weird arbitrary rule. Why shouldn't I be comparing these two with each other? They're part of the same series and people have the exact same logic when it's a James Bond movie, that yeah, each one could be a good entry point into that series but at the same time you're still always going to compare it to what's come before. And being honest I think I'd do Friend of the Devil a disservice if I don't compare it to the first one because this works great as a sequel. It doesn't waste any time catching you up on what you might have missed in the first volume, he's still got the cinema, the characters that were alive at the end of the first volume are still alive in this one. There's also a passing reference to his injury and his former job but for the most part it just cracks on with the story. So for me it was great because I felt like I was just thrown back into it, there was no need for a previously on but I was already familiar enough with the relationships and the locations. And to play devil's advocate, the only major problem that I have when I compare this volume to the first one is that the formula is now very evident. It opens with a flash forward to the third act in the book, it then goes back a bit and shows a bit of Ethan's daily life, he encounters a woman, he'll then intercourse her in a page that I always happen to be reading when somebody's
he's looking over my shoulder. He'll then get wrapped up in a mystery because of the woman, gets beaten up and meets the goons of the enemy, and then meets the main enemy and ends up solving everything. And let's not get twisted, there's nothing wrong with having a framework, especially if it was one that entertained before, but using the same one for two books in a row? Something about that just feels lazy from a title that often provides such quality. And it's a pattern that I've just noticed with Brubaker on more than a handful of occasions. He can get stuck in this rhythm and this flow that he's used to and it was something that really hindered my enjoyment of Kill or Be Killed. And sure, if that's a framework that he feels comfortable writing within, then why wouldn't you stick with it? But at the same time, I just feel like it wasn't trying to push the boat out as much when it came to that structure. And this might seem a bit unfair of me bringing it up in only the second volume of the series, but it's something that I'm going to be looking out for in the later volumes as well. Unless, of course, no one watches this video. However, when it comes to Reckless, I can sort of appreciate the format because it is trying to be one of those crime noir pulp thrillers. So maybe that was an archetype that Brubaker really liked when he was reading other books or movies from this genre and he wanted to replicate it here. And it's something that I'm not nearly educated enough to comment on. The only real crime noir that I've ever watched is Double Indemnity when I had to study it for film studies, which in case you couldn't gather, really did not help me when I was trying to decide on a career. But despite the few homages that I am still able to pick up on and the fact that Ethan is just a perfect protagonist for this type of story, I loved how it still felt modernised despite being set in 1985 and not so stuck in its ways that you can only really enjoy this if you enjoy that genre in the first place. If you've got no experience with crime noir or pulp stories, you can still just jump into this and have a great time. And so that I'm not being so much of an arsehole about it, because this was in a longer story, that repeated format wasn't as much of a problem as it was when it was happening regularly in a monthly series. And additionally, because of that familiarity with book one, it did mean that this got started a bit quicker, which weirdly meant that it could slow itself down and give it more breathing room later on. And that's one particular aspect of Friend of the Devil that I really enjoyed, it was just watching Ethan doing a lot more detective work. Now I feel like in volume one he was doing a lot more of the sneaky tricks like when he did that thing with the car brake light, but here we got to see him do investigating and looking through articles and some of the stuff that you might actually find to be quite boring. But because of Brubaker's skill it's still entertaining to see him building up leads, following up on them, meeting dead ends and then having to retrace his steps. And I think because it had all of that goodwill from book one and it knew that you'd already been quite entertained by that one, it had that composure to give itself that time to really develop these elements of the plot. And a good side effect of that is that I felt like overall this had a much better supporting cast. I don't think there was as much development on Ethan, which I was a bit disappointed about, but at least he didn't radically change his character. And besides him and his friend at the cinema, whose name eludes me at this point, there isn't really a lot of characters that I remember from the first book. Whereas with this one, I really enjoyed the dialogue that was going on with the cult leaders and the directors and even Lynn. And that was another aspect where I feel like Brubaker got more of a chance to showcase his skills. Without spoiling too much, the love interest in the first book isn't really in it for long. We did have the benefit of them having history before the book started, which he could catch us up on. Yet here we got to see Ethan and Lynn meet for the first time and go on dates and him have some form of normal life. But this meant that the second book had more of a genuine emotional core. Again, without spoiling too much, the girl in book one already had a connection with Ethan and his motivation was mostly just told to us because we couldn't see them fall in love or how they broke up. But what Ethan and Lynn had felt more real. Additionally, I just loved the backstory that they gave to her, but who'd have thought I'd be okay listening to the story of her parents immigrating when the main character is a tactical badass. And it's another reason why I feel like these longer, one and done type stories are so great. It's almost like being able to binge a series on Netflix rather than having to wait week to week. Because had this been a monthly title, either the Lynn backstory would have taken up an entire issue, or she would have got her own mini series or one shot or spin off. I don't know, maybe you could call it a Lynn off. Nope. Sorry. However, I don't feel like Friend of the Devil was as well paced as the first one. Had this been the second arc of a book that had all been reading in one go, it would have felt like a nice little bit of a break. But if I am comparing these two as standalone stories, which I'm often told that you can, I would have to give the edge to the original Reckless. And maybe it's as a result of some of that praise that I've just been giving it where I said that it had a bit more time to flesh out some elements of the plot. But in comparison, the first volume just felt non-stop from start to finish. Whereas there were a couple of occasions where it could get a bit tiring just following Ethan going on these trails and some of them just ending up being nothing. And sure, it's fun to add elements like that for realism, similar to that mission in GTA 5 where you had to mop up that floor, but exactly like that example, it's not really going to do any favours for your enjoyment or your pace. And I'm not knocking the book, I still had a great time with it overall, I just think it's something worth noting if you're going into this straight from volume 1. But the sense that I got throughout Friend of the Devil was that this was a story that Brubaker and Phillips really wanted to tell. It's called The First Book is a Revenge Story, which is really fun, but it's something that's 
not difficult to pull off and keep people engaged with. This had the ambition to do something a bit different and not just retrace the exact same steps that the first one went over, even if the formula did. But at the same time, it doesn't feel completely out of touch with the world that the first book set up. And if anything, this felt more like a real chapter in Ethan's life, more so than the first book ever did, while still keeping me engaged, guessing, and entertained throughout. Does this work great as a standalone story? Yes, but it's the next instalment for a very promising series. I think it works just that bit better. This is my final verdict. And sequels aren't easy. It's either too much like the original or just a radical change for the worst. But with Reckless Friend of the Devil, Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips prove that good sequels aren't impossible. And when done well, can expand the world and the characters in new and interesting ways. This duo just represents quality to me. And in this second chapter in Ethan Reckless's life, they take me on a fun and intriguing journey through 1985. Personally, I don't think it bested its predecessor, but that doesn't mean that you should write it off. Sure, yeah, the formula was a bit more obvious this time round, and it does focus more on Ethan's detective work than it does on action, which may hinder the enjoyment for some, but the art's still stellar and the change of pace made it feel like it wasn't just trying to tread water. This second volume didn't ruin me excitement for this series and I'm still looking forward to all the upcoming volumes, because any time that I see Ed and Sean's name on a book, it's like seeing my favourite meal on a menu. For the price of admission, you won't find many better crime noir stories within the graphic novel landscape, and because of that, I'm going to give it a very decent score of 80%. Woof woof. So that's the video, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Until next time, just make sure that you stay safe and stay mad all you dogs. Woof woof, see you at the next video.